Hi, I'm Craig, and if you're watching this while in a traffic jam, you shouldn't be watching video while driving. And this is Mental Floss Video. Today I'm going to answer Colleen Jousma's big question. Why do traffic jams occur? Is it only because there are too many cars on the road, or is there something more to it? Well, let's get started. Roads. Where we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs> That's the second time I've done that exact thing on Mental Floss. <laughs> The answer is essentially that there are too many cars compared to available space on the road. It's basically a matter of supply and demand. In the U.S., about half of traffic jams are recurring, according to the Federal Highway Administration. Or FAHA! <laughs> this means it's a type of congestion on the road that happens every single day. The other 50% are due to non-recurring factors like weather, construction, and accidents. Or maybe kangaroos in the road if you're in Australia. During all of these, it's usually as simple as there are more cars on the road, so there are more people braking, causing slower speeds and less available space. Done. This is a really short video. Wow. I'll say more. Traffic's bad this time of day. To move beyond that simple explanation, traffic congestion is of interest to some mathematicians, and they have a few more detailed theories on traffic jams and their effects. In 2007, a group of mathematicians from the University of Exeter published a model explaining the traffic jams that seem to happen for no reason. They found that these can occur due to one single event, like a big tractor trailer switching lanes. If the driver behind the trailer slows down below what the writer has described as a critical speed, then that impacts the driver behind them, and 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 so on. Eventually, cars that were miles behind the incident will actually slow to a complete stop. This means that you can make a simple mistake on the road that causes a huge traffic jam. I hate traffic jams! Ugh! There's also the three-phase traffic theory, created by a man named Boris Kerner. He explained that traffic jams occur in three phases that can be explained by physics. Free flow, synchronized flow, and, my nickname in high school, wide moving jam. This gets into some complicated mathematical equations, but basically Kerner claimed that synchronized flow is the type of congestion when more cars enter onto the road and speed decreases. The idea is that there's a relationship between speed and number of cars. As one goes up, the other goes down. Wide moving jams are sometimes the result of synchronized flow. This happens when enough cars are involved in synchronized flow that it no longer can be solved by passing the bottleneck. There's also something known as the familiarity effect, which has an impact on traffic. Basically, people are more likely to ignore traffic laws when they're familiar with the roads or close to home. These little moments have been shown to cause more traffic. It sounds dramatic, but a little bit really does go a long way, like a 2013 study from MIT and Berkeley tracked 680,000 Boston commuters via their cell phones. They found that 98% of Boston roads were actually below their top capacity. Only 2% of roads were above capacity, but that caused the jams to flow out onto the other roads. Thanks for watching Mental Floss Video, which is made with the help of all these nice, wide-moving jams. If you have a big question of your own that you'd like answered, leave it in the comments below. See you next time.